Hi everyone, hope you're doing excellent today. I'm so excited that you're joining us yet again today. Of course, I'm really excited that he's here with me again. So we posted a video um, talking to single individuals, talking about maximizing your single season. And in that video, I mentioned that we're gonna do a few part series of videos talking to singles, talking to the, those in courtship, talking to the married, talking to parents, just a few things to kind of advise you, counsel you, and encourage you just to help you in whatever season of life that you may be in. So that one, you can find the video on my YouTube channel and watch it. I know that you'll be so, so blessed. So today we're going to be focusing on courtship. Yeah. But before we do that, you want to say hello to the people? Yeah, hello, everybody. God bless you. I'm sure you enjoyed the last video and we look forward to spending this time with you and trust God that it will be productive for you individually and also in your courtship relationship, yes. particularly for this session. Yes, yes, yes. So let's get into it. When we say courtship, we mean you're in a relationship leading to marriage. Um, some of you even call it dating, whatever it is. As long as that relationship is leading towards marriage, that's what we're talking about here today. And there's no lay down law as far as how long courtship should be. Um, as long as the two of you come to the point where you are 100% sure that you are ready to join your lives together, join your destinies together and begin to build a marriage and family from the ground up, then that's enough for you to go ahead. But the courtship period is really, I think, the foundation laying period for yeah. marriage. It's the time where you really take the time to lay a solid foundation before you actually get married. I think for us, it's one of the things that really, really helped us. I find that a lot of times when people are in courtship, um, they don't really maximize that season. They don't really do the things that they are supposed to do during the courtship season. And when they get married, they begin to see that some of the time that they were in courtship was a bit wasted. Thank God that he can turn things around and restore in a marriage. But it's always good to get it right from the very beginning. Yeah. A lot of things that we practice even in marriage now um, are things that we talked about in courtship, right? Yeah. And things that we even practiced in courtship. So what do you think? What do you think? I want to hear what you have to say. What do you think about the courtship phase? Well, I think the courtship phase is very important yeah. phase, sensitive phase. Like you said earlier, it's the phase where you, phase where you build a foundation really towards marriage. Yeah. And um, I think going back to where we began and looking at the single phase, single phase is about building yourself. Yeah. You focus on making yourself the right material. Yes. You, you focus on making yourself the right product, as it were, yes. to become you know, to prepare you on the journey towards marriage. Yes. But now the journey as it were towards marriage begins at courtship. At courtship, yes. So that's where the foundation to me is laid. Yes. What kind of relationship you are going to have, the culture of that relationship, the um, expectations and the yes. outcome is sort of set at the courtship stage. Yes. So in many ways, if that stage is wasted, it becomes more difficult mm -hmm. on the back end to mm -hmm. begin to try to work on the marriage. I look at it like building a house. If you build a house wrongly and then you're trying to correct it after it is built, it's more difficult yes. than making your corrections before the house is actually constructed. Yes. So many times you find individuals that they get together and then they begin to have different crises here and there. Yeah. Not necessarily because they made the wrong decision about marriage in terms of who to get married to, but sometimes because the season of courtship was in its way wasted yeah. before the marriage, um, took you know, place. took place. Yeah. So I think the season of courtship is where you begin to set the tone. Yes, set the um, tone, yes. For your marital experience. Yes. yes. And that's why many times you find out that what takes place in courtship in some ways tends to mirror what will take place in marriage. In marriage yeah. So if the courtship has certain kind of characteristics that maybe are, you know, contrary to what you expect and they are not dealt with and corrected, the likelihood is that that's what you begin to experience in marriage. Yeah. And it's not that it cannot be corrected in marriage, but it's just more difficult at that point yes. because it has been allowed to fester. Yes. Now, yes. to piggyback on what you said earlier about time in courtship, how mm -hmm. much time. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, there is no hard and fast rule yeah. about the time that you spend in courtship. But it's important to say that it must be sufficient. Yeah. It shouldn't be, sorry to cut you off, it shouldn't be unnecessarily, I like to say un unnecessarily long, and mm. it shouldn't be unnecessarily short. short. Yeah. 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 I think both of them lead to compromise. When it's too short, you compromise in terms of your preparation. Yes. When it's too long, you may end up compromising 
in other ways, maybe mm -hmm. in terms of your, uh, whether it's uh, purity or chastity or whatever the case may be, you may end up compromising there. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So when it's too long, there may be physical compromise. When it's too short, there will be mostly compromise in terms of preparation. Yeah. So I find people who find somebody today, I uh, know I've been waiting to get married, they I jump into it and get married. Well, the, the, the reason why many of them tend to have issues is not necessarily because they all made the wrong choice in mm. who to marry, mm -hmm. but simply because they didn't prepare. Yeah. Right? So sometimes I look at it like, you know, when, you, when you're building in construction, you have to wait for the concrete to harden mm. before you put something <laughs> else on top of yes. it. So if you don't allow that process to take place and you just think, oh, okay, I need to finish this house in the next one week. So you put concrete and as in hardened, you put something on top of it. Well, everything is going to keep sinking and before you know it, the house will crash. Yeah. So sometimes that's what happens, I think, in courtship. What, what about some people who... Sometimes I hear people say, but you know, God has told me this is the person I'm supposed to get married yeah. to. So let's just go. We don't need to waste time. God has, has said it. We don't need to take the time to really get to know each other. If God has said it, it's let's it, it must work. Yeah. Um, you know, and while it's true, when God tells you, Okay, go ahead with this relationship, I'm all for it, shouldn't you still take the time to ensure that you are of one mind, you you agree on the same things and, and things like that. Because I even remember for us, even after praying about it and being sure um, that this was God's ordained relationship from the beginning, we still took the time to make sure yeah, that you have to. we talked about a lot of things, discussed a lot of things to make sure that we were of one mind. So Yeah, I think the way I look at it is, um, again, maybe I'll go back to illustrations. Mm. All right, so God saying this is the right marriage for you or this is the right person for you in the journey of marriage. Mm -hmm. It's almost like giving you a plan. Mm. So you, you and I both know that um, a plan on paper is different from a plan on ground, depending on what the person who was building did. Yeah. So God gives you the plan and says, this is who you should get married. This is how you should build your marriage. Yeah. But you have to build it. You have to build it, yeah. So the building process now, most of the time, is that courtship process where you are putting the blocks in place, you are putting the pillars where they should be according to the plan. So God giving you the plan does not negate the necessity the for you to do the work. Mm. Now, that work takes certain amount of time. Yeah. It may not be equal for all. Yeah. So you can't, you can't say it's one year, it's two years, you know. It's three years, it's four Everyone years. Everyone is unique. Everyone is unique. Yeah. You know, just like practically every building is unique. It yeah. takes different timelines to execute certain projects. Yeah. So I think the key thing is to be true to what God's plan is for you mm. as far as your, mar your marriage is concerned and take the time to be able to put everything in place. Mm. Recognizing that whatever it is that is being put in place today secures your tomorrow yeah. to give you rest. Yeah. You know, so I think that's the key thing as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. You know, the ability to recognize that, yes, you found the person that God has ordained for you, but there is a preparation that has to take place. And if that doesn't take place, there will be consequences. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we have to be, be mindful. <laughs> mindful of that. Yeah, yeah. but I think it's, it's important to also remember that the two people are... They're coming from different back backgrounds, yeah. different experiences in life. So you will not come together and then just begin to see everything eye to eye. It takes a lot of discussions, a lot of talking about it, a lot of rubbing minds with each other to begin to see things from the same perspective. So that work that you've yeah. talked about is, is critical. Now, during the courtship phase, I think that one of the um, things that people do when they're in courtship is that they don't pay attention to the critical things, mm -hmm. which is what kind of some of the things I want us to talk about. They don't pay attention to the important things. You find them, most people in courtship are so infatuated, I would say, by each other. They don't talk about the things that actually will matter when you get actually get into marriage. So I want us to talk about some of those things. What mm -hmm. are some things that you think are critical for people in courtship to pay attention to? Well, I think, let me, let me first start with, you know, what you said now in terms of how, what people use the courtship years to do. Mm. I think what you're given is one version of mm. it. 
some people practically don't even, I mean, that's just people who are just being maybe romantic. There are individuals who don't even pay attention to that either. Mm. But it's just about, okay, now we've met, what's our Let's plan to get married? It is, it is. So people get consumed by different things. So yeah. Some people get consumed by an infatuation with the spouse. Yeah. Some people are infatuated with the process of getting married. So their focus is about the execution of the yeah. wedding. Yeah. As it were, you know, yeah. let, let's get Just married. Get let's married, make yeah. everybody see that we, <laughs> you know, we've got <laughs> yeah. to marry and so forth. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think people get infatuated with different, with different things. things. But I believe that when it comes to the, the, the aspect of the courtship, what do you do? to make it um, productive, what mm -hmm. should you use your time to do? Mm -hmm. I think first and foremost is you need to unify your vision. Mm -hmm. I think that's the foundation of it because the truth is that no matter how, um, how you know, unified you seem in any other area, if your visions do not unify, there is a crisis looming. Somewhere, somewhere around yeah, yeah around the corner so it's very important you know when we're talking about the singles we're talking about the need for them to really locate what the, the plan of god really is for yeah. each one's life yeah and this is the purpose because yeah. when you come to courtship you need to know what your purpose is so that by the time you are having these conversations there is a Unif unifying of your vision. Yeah, so that sorry, that means that in courtship, the purpose you should talk about it. You, you should have talk to. about well, you have to you have to talk about what you believe God has created you to do on the yeah. earth. Both people have to sit down and discuss it. Yeah, not yeah. just surface, right? Because you sometimes some people down. yeah, you have to break it down because sometimes some people talk from the surface and uh, the person says, Okay, I understand, I understand, but you you have to know the details of what that person believes God has created them to do. And so how they know. need to execute it. And how they I need think to it's, it. it's very important because sometimes you find out that people tend to know what it is that they are um, on the earth for, what God sent them to, to the earth to do, but they have no clue how they expect to execute mm. it. So, the, I mean, this is where sometimes the, the clash is a clash of not, not purpose, but methods. Methods, okay. How do we execute it? Mm. I think I need to do A. You think you need to do B. How do we really execute it? Because think about it. Sometimes you have two individuals that have, you know, very, very clear visions, but not very clear methods. Mm. So by the time they get into the practical side of marriage, which is where family and all those other things come into play, yeah. there's a crisis because there is no... There is no way for those things that they have said they want to do to get done the way that they want to do it yeah. and still have a functioning family. Yeah. So it's very important for individuals in the courtship phase to discuss not only the details of the purpose, but the details of the method. The method. That's because the, you mean the process of... How, how you're going right? to execute the vision. Yeah. Yeah. The method to execute the vision. Yeah. Why? Because sometimes you have the purpose given by God. Mm -hmm. and then the method is not yet clarified. Mm -hmm. I believe in those discussions, the clarification of the method takes place. Mm -hmm. That's where, you know, certain things become very clear in terms of how the execution of that, um, you know, purpose will, will be done. Yeah. So it's, it's, I think it's important. Yeah. That's central to all that needs to take place. There must be clarification of not only your purpose, but also the method of delivery. Okay, so that's number one. Yeah. What else do you think? I think number two is going to be something around, um, not just, now I think we've dealt with on the personal side, what our spiritual lives are going to be. Yeah. But it's also important, uh, you know, in, in, in this aspect, in the marriage aspect, to understand what spiritual priorities are going to look like. Mm. How is your spiritual life going to be designed? Yeah. It, you know, some people come, one person comes from a certain background where things are done a certain way, another one comes from another background, and yes, they may both be spiritual, yeah. as it were, yeah. or from spiritual backgrounds, but that does not mm -hmm. negate the need to you know, clarify yeah. how you are going to operate spiritually. Well, yeah. I've, I've seen families where, you know, there is this issue about, you know, oh, I grew up in a house where we hold a morning devotion every morning at, you know, five o'clock in the morning. And my wife just won't do that with me. <laughs> or my husband just won't mm -hmm. do that with me. Mm -hmm. All right, so what's the problem there? The problem there is there is no clarity of how they want to execute their spiritual yeah. lives. Yeah. Now, this other person says, oh, well, me personally, I need to start my day first by myself. Mm. 
You know, so one person says, no, we must start it together. <laughs> the other one says, we must start it by myself. Yeah. Because the spiritual practices are not clear. Yeah. You know, things like that need to be clarified so that you don't get into marriage with wrong expectations. expectations so yeah. both individuals may be spiritual, but they approach it from a different angle. Yeah. One believes that we start it together. The other one believes I started alone, then we now later can have time together, whatever yeah. the case may be. So you may have such conflicts here and there about your spiritual practices. You know, and that goes beyond just our personal relationship with God, but even the area of fellowship. Mm -hmm. Our commitment to fellowship. So you, you know, we're talking earlier about individuals that when they are single, you know, um, we said in the, in the single session, they're single, they are committed to God and all those kind of things, most of the time anyway because of the issue of marriage. Mm -hmm. And then when they do get married, they sacrifice that area. Yeah. But if I'm going to remain committed to God, if you are going to remain committed to God, how do we, how do we go about that? Yeah. What is expected? So the area of spirituality goes beyond just our you know, personal devotional life but our fellowship life, mm. what is that going to look like and what's, what's going to be expected, as it were, yeah. in that area. So I think, you know, those are two areas that I believe are very key. Now, can I move on? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can. All right. So now the third part that I think is, um, is important to note is in the spirit of courtship, it's important to focus on development. Mm. Self-development, you mean? Self-development and you know, corporate development okay. as, a, as a couple. Yeah. You know, in our own time, we spent a lot of time doing that, going yes. to going to uh, bookshops, spending time reading, reading yes. trying to discuss what we found yes. and so forth. It's very important because sometimes when you have two individuals, you come in at different levels. And if growth is uneven, Mm. It can cause crisis. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's very important in the season of courtship to develop together. I think when you do that, you also create a habit of continuous development. Mm -hmm. yes. So that one party is not left behind while the other party seems to be advancing. Yes. Because when that takes place like that, over time there will be a schism, there will be a mm. crack. Mm -hmm. And then that can lead many times to crisis. crisis yeah. So I've seen people who would say, my wife is not spiritual. My husband is not spiritual. It didn't happen overnight. The, because a person who feels they have grown to a certain level of maturity, it takes time. Nobody grows overnight. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, then it means that that individual has left the spouse in that journey of growth. Yeah. And I believe that that starts, first of all, in courtship. Mm. I've seen many people complain about their spouses. He doesn't read or she doesn't read. He doesn't pray. She doesn't pray. Mm. You know, things like that. But those are things that are built in the courtship phase. Yes. You know, you develop that in the courtship phase. And again, this is why I believe courtship should not be too short. Yes. Because in the process of courtship, I mean, the person can pretend for a short period of time, but not very long. Mm -hmm. You know, the area, for example, prayer, <laughs> you want to pray. Prayer, you can pretend that you can pray one time, two times, three times. But the issue of continuity, it takes certain discipline yes. to do that. So I think all of these things, developing oneself is so important. Yeah. I think just, just to add to what you're saying, because the joint development is so important sometimes you find a man a gentleman or a lady who meets somebody and maybe the gentleman is quite intellectually sound and then he sees a lady and he says oh she's not on my level mm -hmm. but you can help her that's i think that's the point i'm trying exactly. to make you can actually help her get to your level whatever that you believe your level is um, during the courtship phase, if you take the time to do so, if you're patient enough to do so. So this is so important because sometimes you find people who overlook a certain person yeah. for marriage because they feel this person is not on my level, level whether, whether it's spiritually, whether it's mentally or whatever the case may be. I always like to say that you have to give people room to grow. Nobody yeah. is perfect. So you can't just say the man must be X, Y, Z. As long as he is willing to do what is required to grow and he's disciplining himself he's not doing it because of you yeah. because when it comes to marriage you shouldn't marry somebody who is doing something because of you mm -hmm. um, otherwise you will have issues in the marriage you should they should you should see that they are willing to do it because 
they desire to do because they desire to grow. When it comes to someone, whether it's even their spiritual life, you don't marry someone who will become born again because of you yeah. or who would pray because of you or who would go to church because of you. You have to marry, you should marry someone who is willing to seek God, whether they marry you or not, mm -hmm. whether they're in a relationship with you or not. But the, my point is that you shouldn't overlook certain people because you feel as if they are not on the same level. Am I, am I correct with that? Yeah, yeah. I, th I think, I, personally, I think that sometimes the on my level, on my level issue is a pride matter. Mm. Because the truth is, um, you know, like the scripture says that uh, anyone who think he knows, let him know he doesn't know he doesn't as he know. ought yes. to know. Yes. It takes a bit of humility to actually have maturity. Mm. So one of the key elements of maturity is humility. Mm. And I think that that learning attitude, it tends to rub off if you, if you are genuinely yes. mature. Yes. If you are actually one who is really growing, your desire to learn and hunger for knowledge tends to rub off. Rub off yeah. Now the truth is that if you are in a relationship with somebody who does not have the same desire for growth, over time, there will be a disparity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think there will be a natural schism. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not going to be a matter of, you know, I, I, am, I am better than you or, you know, you are less than me, as yeah. it were. Yeah. But the hunger and the desire tends to separate. Yes. You understand? Yes. So I believe that when you find the right person, which you should do spiritually first. first. Mm -hmm. I think when you do get that right person, your if you are actually more mature, your hunger and desire sure. will drive or inspire the other person yes. to actually move up higher. Not because of the relationship with you or in terms of just desire to have a relationship with you, but looking at an example. An yes. example, in a way, tends to inspire continuous yes. action. So. I think it's very important not to overlook anybody. Yes. Um, sometimes you find out that the individuals that you overlook may outgrow you if mm -hmm. you are not careful. Absolutely, yes. Uh, so yes. it's very important for us not to do that. Yeah. Yeah, um, I like that. I like what he said about you. You, you are you can make yourself as an example. You can make yourself an example for that person. So the person is desiring to grow, desiring to change because they see you as an example. I always like to say that you shouldn't get into a, new, a relationship with somebody that's not adding value. You know, we talk about even normal friendships, but when it comes to a relationship leading towards marriage, the man should be adding value to your life and mm -hmm. the woman should be adding value to your life in some kind of way. If that is not the case, then I personally don't believe the relationship should go further. No, it shouldn't. But it, it shouldn't, but it's, it's so critical to just ensure that you also, you yourself as a, an example, when you are an example and your own, um, it's genuine from you, you wouldn't have to even force yeah. the person or, you know, coerce the person or anything like that. They want to do it willingly because they see you as an example. So that's a, a key point. What do you think about also discussing roles and responsibilities yeah. in marriage? Because uh, sometimes, sorry, I don't mean to mm -hmm. cut you off. So, sometimes you find that um, people are Zoom. Yeah. The lady assumes the man should know what his role is. He knows what he's supposed to do. Um, this is what my own father did. This is what my uncle. This is what my brother does. The woman, the man, also assumes the same thing of the woman. She should know what to do. This is what my own mom did, at least, or this is what my aunt does, or whatever it is. So most times you find that it's not talked about. Yeah. It's not discussed. What I, what's your expectation, um, and and things like that. So when they get married. The, there's always an issue there because they didn't discuss it, they didn't talk about it, they just assumed that this person should know or this is how I know it's meant to be so mm. that's what he or she's supposed to do. So what do you think about that when it comes to courtship? Should it be discussed? Should, should it be talked about? Yeah, roles have to be talked about. I think roles are in you know, different dimensions. You have general roles mm -hmm. that are clearly scripturally outlined and yes. then you have certain specifics in terms of how you employ the uniqueness of each individual within the family mm. to be able to get the best out of the family setting. Mm -hmm. All right. So, for example, usually you are taught, you know, if you go, if you if you really study books and all that, you are taught about what the family government looks like. Yes. And what how to apply those laws, as it were, in general mm -hmm. to the home. Mm -hmm. But then there are the specifics of each individual in terms of preferences, in terms of maybe background, culture, other, other mm -hmm. issues that yes. come into play, yeah. which need to be clarified. Yes. Now, the truth is that to certain people, for example, certain things mean, um, mean have specific meanings. So, for example, the Bible will tell you, for example, that a wife should submit to the husband, but 
what is the practical and you know implementation of that within your own experience now the bible is saying that the wife, the husband should love the wife as christ loved the church but what is the practical you know implementation of that within your own experience yeah. so these are general rules but they must have some kind of specific implementation which has to be clear yeah. so who does what in yeah. the home when it comes to the you know raising of children yes the bible will tell us that children, you know parents have the responsibility to raise their children in the nurture and admonition of the lord okay fine yes it's a general instruction to the parents but who does what, what? particularly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. within the setting mm-hmm. so looking at what individual responsibilities are and how it will be important to deploy you know that aspect of you know the commandment of god how do we play it out mm-hmm. so i think sometimes within courtship you have individuals that you know would talk a good one about the theory how the you know, this is how I want to do things, etc. Now, of course, you can't test out everything. Yeah. But there are certain aspects of roles that you can test out in mm-hmm. terms of how an individual is expected to handle certain situations here and there. I think those are that's where you begin to perfect or clarify who is really going to be able to handle what within yeah. the family setting. But I, I believe it's extremely important to talk about it. It's important to experiment with it within the limits of normalcy Mm -hmm. and um, Christian boundaries. Mm -hmm. Uh, But making those things clear, I think, is absolutely important within courtship ahead of marriage. Yeah, I think it's it's also important not to force or impose what you know on the other person. Because like we said already, you may be coming from a you will be coming from a different experience mm-hmm. where maybe the role in your own home is the, your father did this, your mother did that, and the person you want to get married to may be coming from a home where it was the opposite. Yeah. So you shouldn't try to impose what was your own experience on the other person. Yeah. Remember that you're going to be building your own home from the ground up. From scratch so you can discuss how will it work for us yeah. how do we implement it for us for our own unique <laughs> situation because sometimes you find people who feel as if we don't do it this way it cannot work or we must do it xyz but it's not necessarily true you can figure it out that's what the courtship season is for yeah. when you discuss and rub minds together then you say so how can we make it work for our own home that we want to build and then you take it from there? Yeah. So I think that that's also critical. So we have to be willing to compromise here and there yeah. in discussing all these things. I think in talking about compromise, I would also have want to caution. Hmm. Courtship is not marriage. Yeah. So because courtship is not marriage, you have to be careful to see if that compromise really is going to be excessive mm, very true. and is going to be probably a compromise of what you truly believe yes. deeply within you, yes. then you may need to re-examine that relationship and yes. see whether it should continue. Yes, very so, true. If you're not seeing eye to eye. Yeah, right. and even in terms of sometimes people's understanding of scriptures mm. is different. Yes. So if my interpretation of scriptures is a certain dimension and somebody else has this interpretation of the same scripture the truth is that if you ask me to compromise i'll be compromising my conviction Mm. if you ask the other person to compromise they're going to be compromising their conviction Mm. and ultimately when a person compromises their conviction they either feel violated or you'll find out that they can only sustain it for a certain period of time and to lead to crisis and breakdown so except there is a change of conviction because there are certain things that that are conviction matters Mm -hmm. Except there is a change of conviction, yeah. the relationship has to be reevaluated yeah. to see whether that relationship truly should go, go forward or not. Okay. Because it's not a matter of just whether it's right or wrong, but it's a matter of what the person believes yes. to be right or wrong. Yes, very key. Absolutely important. So except that there is a true change in terms of the position of that individual, from looking at what the scriptures say, yes. uh, all right. Without that, I don't think that that relationship should continue. Yeah. So don't. In other words, don't. If you are really convicted about something, don't, don't compromise. Don't compromise. Because if you decide to compromise and you end up getting married, like was said, it would it wouldn't last mm. for a, it won't it won't last. And yeah. you know, with time, you begin to see that the two of you begin to have. All kinds of issues between yourselves because you will feel as if you were forced or you didn't have a choice or something like that yeah. right so the compromise should be within reason yeah. basically should be within within reason but the key thing is to make sure that the two of you are in agreement because if you are not in agreement 
no marriage can work you without can work agreement. Together, yeah. yeah, no marriage. Yeah, two cannot work together unless they agree. So if you know that, no, we're just not seeing eye to eye on this. It's just not working out. Um, wisdom demands that you end the relationship, as we always often hear. A broken courtship is better than a broken marriage. Much so, better. So please ensure that everything is within reason, and then there is agreement. Mm -hmm. um, do you? Is there any other thing that you think should be? spoken about should be discussed i mean there are so many other things but i think what we are trying to talk about are critical things that yeah. really should be discussed but do you have any other additional thing and i think the final thing i would say is that you know just make sure that you are you either get you you get mentors and counselors mm -hmm. very key um if you do get that they tend to help you to escape pitfalls yes um sometimes they even help you to know when the relationship is not <laughs> yeah, it's not worth it, yes. yeah. So I think it's important to to have that, you know, within within reach at all times. Yeah, don't hide your relationship. Don't, don't do don't that. Don't hide it. Don't do that. If you hide it, is there's something wrong? Yeah, there's something yeah. wrong somewhere. So I think it's very important. Once once you have counselors and you have mentors that can guide you, sometimes they see what you don't. Don't see yes. And then they can assist you as well in taking right decisions but always make sure that your mentors and counselors are people who will give you god, godly, godly counsel counsel, counsel godly. that is based on scriptures godly. and that is clear yes and people who have a testimony proven testimony yeah. very critical very very critical i'm glad he said that whether you are whether it's counselors that are physical counselors or sometimes yeah. when you're reading books, books yeah. and things like that, it should be people that have try and study proven, them. Yeah, study them. Find out about their experience. Yes. You know? Yes. Um, it matters a lot. Yes. It matters a lot. Um, you can only give what you have. Yes. So it's important to get that. I think if you get that, you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that I would really want to just add is that if a relationship is toxic, um, you, it shouldn't continue. Mm -hmm. I, I want to just <laughs> add that there. You know, if you know that you're, if you're There's in a relationship, a yeah, the courtship, you're in courtship and it's just toxic. You are constantly fighting, arguing. It doesn't, it's not adding any value to you. Please don't carry on with it and tell yourself, we'll see how it goes or things will get better. You don't waste time. Mm -hmm. Do not waste time. It's so important. Like we've said already, the, the picture of the courtship is, the courtship gives us a picture of what marriage would be like. Yeah. So if the courtship is already toxic and there's no peace in it, there's, you are constantly at loggerheads, then guess what? Marriage is more than likely going to be that way. Yeah. So you don't really need to, to you know, hang out and say, let's see how it goes. There's no need to hang out and, and waste time like that. So I think that's just something that I, I wanted to quickly add in there. Now, before we round up, because we have, we have, I think we've said quite enough and a lot, some of the things that I, I want to point out concerning when you're in courtship, the person that you should be focusing on when it comes to marriage, I just want to point out a few things and then you can just add. Um, number one is a shared faith. I think that's critical. We've mm -hmm. talked about that. Number two, an understanding of the person's vision and purpose. We have talked about that. Number three, maturity. Maturity is key. Um, <laughs> the level of an individual's maturity actually determines how well a marriage will work. Maturity is so important, whether it's emotional maturity, spiritual maturity, um, physical maturity, whatever it is, please pay attention to the maturity level of the person that you intend to get married to. Maturity does, is not necessarily about your age. It's about in your ability to accept responsibility. It's, it, it's, in, it's seen in how you respond to situations. Number four, an understanding of your role. Mm -hmm. You know, whoever you want to get married to, make sure that as you understand your own role or responsibility, whether you're a husband or wife, the person you want to get married to also understands their own role and responsibility. That's critical. Mm -hmm. Number five, I always like to add an understanding of God's intentions for marriage. That is so critical. Sometimes many people just, you know, get into marri marriage thinking, okay, I've gotten to the phase of marriage, so let's just get married. Mm -hmm. No. You have to understand what, what is God's concept of marriage? Why did he create marriage in the first place? So that you know <laughs> what to expect when you are going into marriage. For yeah. example, the scripture tells us that two people are better than one. So 
as great as life is for you as a single individual, when you get married, your life should be better. Mm -hmm. Things should be so much better. That's God's intention. That's one of God's intentions for marriage. So it's important to understand his own concept for marriage and make sure that the person that you want to get married to also has an understanding mm -hmm. of God's concept for marriage. Because when the two of you have a good understanding of his concept of marriage, then you are willing to do all it takes in order to experience it, right? Yeah. Do you think there's any other thing? Yeah, I think I'll just conclude with submission to authority. Mm. Yes. Um, I always tell people that a single, a man or woman that fears nobody should be feared. Yes. So if he has no authority over him or she has no authority over her, then you should be really concerned mm. because the truth is a man or woman that has no one that he or she fears, you should be afraid of them. Mm. You know, if a person cannot be corrected by somebody above them, believe me, you're going to have an issue correcting them, you know, in the yeah. process of marriage. So I think authority is, is a vital issue. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I, I hope you have found some of these points that we have given to you quite helpful. These are things that helped us <laughs> in our own courtship days. And like I said at the beginning of the video, these are things that have kept helped us manage our home and our marriage um, very well to the glory of God. So I'm trusting God that as you also pay attention to these things in your own courtship in your own relationship um, it will show in your marriage it will show and you yeah. also will have an amazing experience as always we are wishing you god's best yep. in everything that you do in jesus name yeah, once man. again i'm saying thank you to my personal <laughs> pastor <laughs> do you have anything to say no i, th I think um all that needs to be said has been said yeah. please put what you have heard to work yes and we look forward to your testimonies God yeah. bless you. Amen. Take care of yourself. God bless you. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye.